Alhamdulillah, <laughs> We thank Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who provided us another opportunity to be here this weekend with this ICNAS convention. Islamic Circle of North America, alhamdulillah, completed its 50 years of being in, in existence and working in North America. It was MSC which was started in the 60s, and that through the MSA, there were some brothers and sisters who joined and founded the Islamic Circle of North America, which has been working all these years at the grassroots level amongst the Muslim community and to our non-Muslim friends with the purpose of da'wa ilallah, calling humanity to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to learn Islam, to practice in their individual and collective lives and to prepare their next generation as the humble servants of Islam. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all what this small organization has achieved and come up now to this level that we are having the record number of attendance, inshallah, in this convention and in the future conventions also. I also thank our leaders who came before me, particularly Dr. Sayyid Saeed, president of the ISNA, and his bold initiative to have one of our sons of the ICNA to come as the executive director of the ISNA. And I assure him and all our leaders that ICNA, alhamdulillah, is a nursery, is a training process through which we develop our future leaders. And they are ready to serve in any capacity, in any Muslim organization towards achieving its goals. Coming to our subject, the healing of humanity. Just mercy, the examples and the, teach and the lessons we learn from the seerah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. First of all, we should think, what is the condition, what is the disease that we want to heal? The humanity at large, including the Muslim Ummah, they are suffering with so many problems and issues, and they are large number to be enlisted, moral issues, economic issues, family issues, and so on. But when we look at the Quran, we find out that the prophets of Allah, the Anbiya alayhi salam, they recognized one fundamental problem with the which the humanity suffers, and all the other issues come out from that. The prophets of Allah, when they came to their respective communities, we find out they said that Allah In Surah An-Nuh, the Nuh alayhi salam, the prophet Noah said that, oh my people, you should worship Allah, you should submit yourself to God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you follow me. When you turn away from your creator and his guidance, then that is the root cause of all the problems and the later on the sufferings of the humanity. Because then they either follow their own whims or somebody else's guidance and that leads on to all kind of issues and problems. So the only solution to that is to invite the mankind, 
to submit to their Lord, their Creator. God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created us, he has also given us a complete guidance in the form of the holy books, in the form of the, his messengers, who have explained the, uh, the book of God Almighty Allah and also shown in their example how to live this life. Now that we believe that Muhammad وسلم, was the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran being the last scripture, now it is the obligation of this ummah, of Muslims, that they should carry out the task of the prophets, Anbiya alayhi salam. And they should address the issue of the, of, the, of the whole humanity. Why the whole humanity? Why not their own nation, their own region, or their own country? The reason is because Islam considers the whole humanity as one family. We are the creation of same God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are the descendants of the same father and mother, Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayhi salam. So this is one family under one God Almighty. So the problems of the humanity, they are our problems, our challenges. And we must address those with love and affection and care and concern. We find this in the example and the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. As the Quran tells us, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the mercy for the, for the whole world, not just the Muslim, not just Arabia, not one country, but the whole mankind. And that mercy we see in his seerah, in his example, that even those who committed crimes against him and his companions of oppression, injustice, and discrimination. When the time came for him to take any revenge, he did not take any revenge. Rather, he forgave them and prayed for them for their success in this world and the hereafter. And this we find in the lessons of the seerah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's where Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says in the Quran, that فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضْزٍ غَلِيزٍ غَلِيزُ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكْ That this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are very kind, you are very compassionate. If you were a hard-hearted person, then they would have run away from you. So therefore you should consult them in your matters. You should make dua for their forgiveness and overlook their mistakes. And we find this example in the Prophet ﷺ of mercy and kindness to his companions, to his family members, and to even the non-Muslims, to the enemies. The kindness, the mercy and forgiveness. This is the lesson we learn from Sirah Prophet ﷺ. And this is what we as Muslims who are assigned this task of the prophethood, we have to adopt the same method of concern and mercy and compassion to everybody. Even in the face of Islamophobia or anti-Islam that we see, our attitude must be that of forgiveness, overlooking any kind of transgressions from those who do not have knowledge of Islam, a misunderstanding of Islam, we must approach to them with forgiveness. And Alhamdulillah, we find such examples. There are many examples, even in this society. There were people who, were, who faced aggression, physical aggression, but they forgave those who have committed aggression against them. This is the example of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is what wins the hearts of the people. But in addition to this mercy and kindness and compassion, the Prophet ﷺ had a clear manifesto or a program to give to the humanity for solving their issues, their problems, and the various uh, diseases they were afflicted with. 
And what was that program? Of course, the Quran itself is a program, but there, is, there are ayat which are very comprehensive. And one such ayah in Surah An-Nahl tells us three things to be done and three things to be avoided. And we hear this ayah every Jum'ah khutbah. All the khut, uh, khutbah, they recite this ayah. Inna la ya'murukum bil adli bil ihsan wa itaid al qurba wa yanha'a 'anil fahsha'i wal munkar wal baghy ya'izukum la'allakum tadhakkarun Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu one of the companions of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam said this is the most comprehensive verse in the whole Quran which gives us the greatest lessons and agenda how to live our life and how to deal with others. And as an ummah, how we should live our lives and present an example to the others. So three things which are to be done, first and the foremost is the adl, or the justice. This is the minimal which is required from every person as individual and as ummah, that we should never commit Zulm are injustice to anybody. And the adl means to give to the others what is their due. No matter what the circumstances are, that must be done, that, they, that we must pay for what their due is. And avoid the opposite, which is zulm or injustice. The second thing is ihsan. And this term, has several meanings, but one of the meaning is excellence in our performance as Muslims. Like if we do salat, if we do zakat, a psalm, or dealing with others, we should give them more than their due. So this is something above and beyond the adl or justice. And to develop the qualities in us, in our character, in the best possible manner. So this is the ihsan, وَيْتَائِذِ الْقُرْبَى And then to respect our relationship with our family members. And these relationships, even though the other person may not be fulfilling their obligations, still we should be doing more for them. Maintain the relationship of families and fulfill their rights. And there is a lot to be said about it and learned from the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man came to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, I am very, doing good to my relatives, but they turn around and they treat me wrong. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you are doing what you are saying, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you. So this, even in the face of injustice, one should be doing justice and beyond ihsan to their family members and should never cut the relationship with the family members. And there are three things which this ayah tells us to avoid. That you should be avoiding fuhasha wal munkar. Fuhasha are all those indecent acts, whether they are in speech or in our action. Things which take one to fornication and adultery and breakage of the family relationship. The shaitan, our enemy, commands us, the Quran tells us. In the shaitan, it promises you poverty. So it always tells you get more money, even though in an illegal manner, and get involved into fuhasha, in indecent acts. And in the salat, tanha anil fahasha wal munkar. Salat is best remedy against the fahasha and munkar, protects against that. And munkar is something which is prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran and in the Sunnah of Prophet. So we are to avoid the fahasha wal munkar, wal baghj. Baghj means rebellion against Allah or tyranny to the people in one way or the other, whether it is a economic way or physical manner, we should stay away from any kind of tyranny, aggression 
against anybody. So this ayah of the Quran is very comprehensive. This is the one of the programs which we see in the life of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he taught his companions about it and they presented a practical example for it. Now it is our obligation as members of the Muslim Ummah community that we not only learn from the seerah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the compassion, the mercy, the forgiveness and goodness to everyone, whether they are our neighbors, our employees, our bosses, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims, they should see in our speech, in our character, nothing but compassion, mercy, and goodness. And they can speak about it in front of us, in, in our back, that this individual is different, even in the face of injustice, discrimination, our remarks against him or her, we find nothing but compassion and mercy and kindness and forgiveness. This kind of character we must develop. We should develop through controlling our temper and developing close relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa and develop the hub, the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa then we will have that kind of a character of mercy and compassion. And then we must practice what this ayah of Surah An-Nahl tells us of Adl and Ihsan, excellence in our conduct and character with everyone around us. But in my conclusion, I want to say that we cannot do this as individuals. These characteristics of mercy and compassion, of Adl and Ihsan, can be developed in a collective effort. That's where the organizations like Islamic Circle of North America come in. We must belong to the organization, the Jamaat of Muslims, where we have Murabi, our leaders, our teachers, as the one who teaches and show us the example in their conduct and character. To follow. And there is great baraka being part of an Islamic organization. As I said, Yadullahi al Jama'ah. Allah's hand is upon the Jama'ah, the organization. We need organized work. It cannot be done individually. So, therefore, I like to emphasize upon myself and all of us. Then let us be part of this organized struggle under Islamic Circle of North America. You find in the activities of the ICNA the grassroots activism through tarbiyah, the, the, the training through study of Quran and Sunnah, being in the company of the righteous people. Through their conduct and character, we learn. And this was the method of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he developed an exemplary jamaat of the Sahaba companions and through his leadership, and they learned from each other. They, learned, they developed the dedication and commitment for Islam. And the things which come in the way is the hubbu dunya, the love of this world that was removed through the leadership and the teaching of Prophet and his companions. And this we find in an organized effort of just like the Jamaat of ICNA. So therefore I invite you all that you should join hands in your respective communities with the ICNA and be active. It's not just filling out a form and have your name in the list. It's more than that. There are so many activities going on under the ICNA. Tarbiyah, the Da'wah ila Allah, and the uh, service of the mankind through ikna relief and helping hand, and the Da'wah activities going on through the Gain Peace and, and, and Vaislam.com and so on, and the Masajid and, and their services and so on. We should become part of these activities. And we will see a change in our conduct, in our character, 
in the knowledge that we absorb from these activities. It will bring the humility in us. It will bring the compassion and mercy which we talk about, about the seerah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is not something just to talk about and listen about. This is something that we must develop in ourselves. That's the, the, the uh, way to our success in this dunya and the hereafter. So with this I conclude and hope and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will guide us and help us to continue to learn from the beautiful seerah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa the mercy, the compassion, and the love for the humanity and develop these traits in us as Muslim individuals, as families, as communities by getting involved and engaged into the practical struggle of the Muslim Islamic Jamaat like ICNA and others. So this is only with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who continue to make dua to him and turn to him and continue to struggle till we live on this earth to the last day. This is the only way to success. Jazakallah khaira for your attention and I'll leave with this dua that Ya muqalib al-qulub thabit qulubuna ala deenik Ya musarraf al-qulub sarraf qulubuna ala ta'atik ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما آمين يا رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته